Time for us to check in with Nancy Kahalen on this a Tuesday morning. Better Business Bureau. And guess what? You know, there's uh, that there's uh, well, this one is, is that Nancy's going to share with us is about garage door uh, repairs. But but really what this is, Nancy, is just whenever there's anything that goes wrong in our life, unfortunately, there's somebody there uh, when we're in need of something who says, oh, I can help with a deal that might be too good to be true because they could be a scammer who's out to, to take advantage. Good morning, and, and thanks for bringing good us up to date on this latest one. Yeah, uh, good morning. Thank you for having me on. It's true. Fraudsters love to take advantage of urgent situations. So something happens, um, your g- garage door won't go up, won't go down, whatever. It's an It's an urgent situation. So you jump on Google. I need an emergency repair, and what comes up to the top? Um, well, it could be somebody that's paid to be in that top position that really wants to take advantage of your situation. So, uh, unfortunately, garage door repair scams are, are pretty common, and they can leave the homeowners, um, you know, to come to us and report that these unscrupulous uh, emergency repairs uh, were done. So the companies, they target homeowners by advertising their emergency repair service, and then they inflate the amount of work that needs to be done and the parts that need to be replaced. So uh, this sounds a lot like the emergency locksmith scams, and it's exactly the same thing. So uh, they prey on this need to get something fixed right away, and it's something you don't really understand how it works. Um, so they can take advantage of you. Um, yeah. they, Consumers are, you know, they think most businesses are honest, and they are. But the ones that aren't honest are very, very Mm -hmm. active. So we just need to watch out for those uh, red flags. Absolutely. The funny thing is, is that normally, though, you know, in my mind, if I hit the Internet, as you said, so now something's gone wrong. Something's gone wrong with my with, with my garage door. And I go, OK, I got to get this this fixed. And I and I go and the, the first one that that pops up looks fine to me. But the scammer knows that oftentimes there's a guy like me who's like, I don't know anybody. So the very first one that pops up is going to be fine with me. And the fact that it's amazing to me is they can engineer it so they're the first one that pops up. Yeah, they're very smart. You know, as I said before, if they would only use their brains uh, for doing something good, a lot could be accomplished in this world. But, um, you know, unfortunately, they're very smart. They're able to pop up uh, top of the list. and uh, But there are things that you can do uh, to protect yourself, warning signs to look for. And one of them is the business name. Oftentimes, these garage door scammers, and as I said, this is very similar to the locksmith scammers, they'll use multiple names that are kind of generic, like, um, you know, Worcester Garage Door. There might be a company called Worcester Garage Door yeah. that's, you know, a great company, but uh, I'm saying the scammers would try to uh, to come up with a very generic name, but they'll also have um, Shrewsbury Garage Door and Charlton Garage Door, and they have these names, and they'll they'll perhaps have separate phone numbers, so they all look local, but they're really not. Uh, so it's unclear uh, where they're really located. They don't have a physical address listed anywhere, um, and the phone numbers you're calling really are more to a telemarketing center. And uh, they have these folks that are you know, in their trucks ready to come out to your house. So um, that's what to look for. Look for names that aren't legally registered anywhere, no physical address. Um, some of them may provide a phone number or an email address um, to avoid giving you a verifiable location. So they, yeah. they don't want to give you a location because they're – they're not there. Right. So um, <laughs> exactly. If, when they show, exactly when they show up, there's going to be a lack of identification. Yeah. So legitimate repair professionals typically they're wearing a uniform. You know they're branded. Um, they have a uniform. They have identification. They have a company branded vehicle. So the individual, this individual shows up. They don't have proper ID. They don't have a marked vehicle. Um, these are things that uh, should make you a little leery about them. 
unrealistic low prices. You know, as you said, if it's too good to be true, it's most likely not true. Many scammers advertise a very low fee for a service call only to to demand more money for additional repairs. So if the quote seems too good to be true, um, you probably should step away. And they use high pressure. So now you're in a situation, you've got an emergency situation, um, your garage door won't go up, won't stay up, whatever the problem is. Um, they use high pressure to convince you that your garage door requires immediate and costly repairs. And they may insist that you not wait um, wait to have it done, and they demand payment up front. So um, this is something to be uh, leery of as well. Ethical companies don't, they're, they're not using this high pressure. They're not demanding full payment up front. Um, so be cautious of anyone that does that. Uh, and reputable companies will provide you a detailed estimate. Um, these companies won't. All right, so um, be very leery of these red flags. You know, absolutely, uh, and, and that last one especially, that if they're a reputable company, they don't, you know, they're not coming up and saying, hey, before I do anything, fork over the, the, the cash. So that's a, that's a good red flag right there for sure. Uh, and as, as you also said when it came to the, to, to the high pressure, oh, my gosh, you know, you got to get this done right now well do i i mean i can maybe live with my garage door not uh, not being in the best of shape for a, a day or two so what do we, what, what are some things then that i that, that i do that they're giving me the the, the high pressure tactic they want the payment up front what are some things that i, I usually just sort of say to them let, let, i mean I'm, i've i've researched the, the the company i mean that would it would seem to me I want like the Yelp reviews or, or something. It's probably the, the, the first thing. Uh, I, I know my, yeah. right, my, like my wife is always, hey, uh, this person is a little bit cheaper, but they've got six people who say they're pretty good. This person's like 50 bucks more, but they've got 500 people. Uh, you know, 99% of whom say that they're, they're pretty good and a couple of people who, who had a bad experience. I'm going with the guy who's got like the 500 Yelp reviews instead of the person who's got five. Wow. Uh, you got to research the company. You're absolutely right. Listen, uh, get the company's name, but also ask for their address because if they have some kind of a generic name, there could be more than one name this. As I said, this guy could say his name is Worcester Garage Door, but there really is a Worcester Garage Door, you know, that has an excellent reputation. So you need to get that address, match them up. Um, Look into the name, uh, put it in Google, add the word complaint or mm. review or scam to it when you, when you search and um, look for them on BBB.org. So we should have a record for them. And one thing you just said, um, Hank, about the number of reviews, sometimes um, reviews other than on BBB.org, can be mm, faked, you know, faked, huh? you yeah. know? so yeah. I think there have been a lot of court cases, um, a lot of things uh, the FTC has talked about, about companies that pay people to place positive reviews, have their own employees pay, you know, uh, place mm. positive reviews, so a whole bunch of them isn't necessarily a, a good sign. Um, you, you need to make sure that those reviews are authentic. And that's one thing Better Business Bureau does. We verify that this is a real person, that this is a customer of that business um, before the review gets posted. So get multiple estimates. This seems like an urgent thing. Um, you, you get one guy that answers the phone. He says you can be there that afternoon. Don't stop there. Get another estimate. And always ask for credentials yeah. um, because these scammers, they don't have the credentials. They can't um, prove that they're a quali qualified uh, technician or that they're local. So that's really important to um, check on and get everything in writing. So um, don't feel pressured. Uh, don't feel pressured to make a quick decision. Scammers thrive on that. They thrive on urgency. And um, so you really need to step back, review the whole situation, and trust your instincts. If something doesn't feel right, you feel a little uncomfortable, trust your instincts and consider getting another option. How often has somebody, unfortunately, been taken in by a scam and then after 
they say just that. They go, you know, I there was something that wasn't quite right or and, and a lot of times it is the, the the pressure that then made them give in. But they did have some sort of an instinct or or their gut was telling them that something wasn't quite right. And pressure or whatever the, 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 the case may be, they went along with it anyway. And then, you know, they're kicking themselves after. It is something that we commonly read in our scam tracker reports. Um, but gladly i'm telling you that we're also seeing something didn't feel right i remember hearing about this you know so i uh stepped away Mm. i did not go forward with this but they want to let us know about it so that's why it's so important if um someone has had an attempted scam um that they tell us about it so others can read the these scenarios and say yes that's exactly what i'm experiencing here so it's important for um those who have been targeted as victims even if they didn't lose money uh to let us know about the details uh and that gives uh scam trackers so much more information to help them prevent scams absolutely uh yeah please uh, check out BBB Scam Tracker, but also get those reputable reviews from BBB.org. All great resources for you. Nancy Kahalens, the president and CEO, Better Business Serving Central in Western Mass and Northeastern Connecticut. And she joins us each Tuesday for exactly that, that reason so that, you know, we can be forewarned and then we can kind of uh, trust our gut or we can say, hey, you know what? I, I I heard something about this. Let me let me double check that. Nancy, thank you. My pleasure. Thanks for having me on.